I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com. Today we're going to do a product review on the Shark Racer Pro helmet. The Shark Racer Pro is available in a couple of versions. The one that we're going to talk about today is their, their carbon aramid, so like fiberglass with some carbon in it. There's also a full carbon version. The difference between the two, it's really going to be weight. In a size medium, we weighed this fiberglass version 3.35 pounds on our scale. The full carbon dips, I believe, just below three in the same size. So that is going to be the primary difference between the two. Price is a little more expensive for the full carbon. The fiberglass version that we're talking about right here, the one I'm showing you, the retail is $709. I had the opportunity to ride in this helmet for a full track weekend, November of 2017. While I was there, I did bring a couple other helmets just to do some benchmarking, so I blended those in for a couple of laps here and there to compare them head to head with the Shark. I want to start off right now, just go right to its number one strength, aerodynamics and noise level. This helmet is scary quiet. The Bell Race Star is a helmet that I feel was the quietest in our premium line that we talk about and promote here that I've ridden in. Going back to back, going from this to the Star, same earplugs, same track, same guy, same bike, same day. When I first went out in the Star, I thought I forgot my earplugs because I was used to this. It is that quiet. I'm not saying the Star is loud, I'm just saying this is that quiet. So if you're a rider, you really want that quiet, sensation inside the helmet. You want to drown out that noise. This one rises head and shoulders above the competition. Shark focuses on the aerodynamics of the helmet, so the performance in the wind, as well as being quiet. They've taken a lot of technology to be used in the aerospace industry, airplanes and such, and they have used that to develop their helmets. Okay, now let's benchmark the sizing. This is a medium. I measure 58 centimeters on the money, intermediate oval. At this point, the majority of the helmets we offer, almost every single one, does have an intermediate oval head shape. I'm going to compare this right now head-to-head -head with ones that you might be familiar with or perhaps you already own. Arai Corsair X. This helmet has a tighter on and off as compared to the Arai Corsair X, and it runs a little bit tighter. Showy X14, I would say the on-off effort and the overall fit is very close to the X14. Bell Raystar and the Bell Mips helmet. Once again, I feel the on-off effort, this compared to those, is very close and the overall fit also very close. Icon Airframe Pro, same deal. On-off effort, very close, fit very close. AGV, Corsa, Pista, same deal. HJC ARFA 11 Pro. The ARFA 11 Pro runs a little larger than this and has a little easier on-off effort. Okay, while we're talking about fit, one area that is sensitive for some people is the distance from your nose to the chin bar of the helmet. With the Shark, when I had it on, I found I've got about, well, a finger's distance between my nose and the chin bar. Comparing that to other models, that is similar to the Arai Corsair X, to the ARFA 11 Pro from HJC, and the Icon Airframe Pro. It's a little more spacious in that area when I compare it to the Shoei X14 or the RF1200, the AGV Corsa or Pista, and the Bell Star Mips or Race Star helmets. So a little roomier than those helmets in that area. Also important to note, this helmet is designed for people that wear glasses, easy in, easy out. It's got the channel in there to allow for that to happen. Okay, let's talk performance. How did I feel about it while I was riding it? What did I like? What did I not like? Like I said earlier, if you're looking for a quiet helmet, look no further. This is the quietest premium out there, period. Ventilation. This helmet moves an excellent amount of air. It really didn't leave anything for me there to be desired. I would say premium performance. Let's talk about the ventilation system. Here's your intake right here in the chin. It's going to blow some up on the shield for demisting. Fog-free shield. It was effective. It was cold 
in the morning when I rode and this performed really well. It did not fog up on me. They do have a fog free mask you can put in. I mean, this thing would kill any fog. It really is going to totally seal it up so you're not breathing up here at all. I had no need to use that whatsoever. This is a filtered intake vent, which is kind of unique. On or off up here in the brow. Vents up here on the top. Exhaust. Venturi effect here, here, in the diffuser, and then here in the center of the helmet. So the airflow was good. Field of vision was great. It wasn't obstructing on the sides or the top. So when I was in a tuck, I had great vision. Aerodynamics, right, whether you're in a tuck or out of a tuck, this thing is super stable at speed. And that's a big reason why it's so quiet, too. The easier it moves through the air, the less turbulence it creates, the quieter it's going to be. And that's a result of all that engineering that they're doing at Shark, employing those aerodynamic principles to the helmet reduces the level of noise and makes it so much more stable at speed. Overall comfort. I loved it. The fabrics are great. They wicked away the moisture, no problem. So they did a great job there. You know, I felt that it dried adequately in between sessions as well, even without using a fan. The shield, it's class one optics. There was zero distortion wherever I was looking. So all in all, the performance of the helmet, I really loved it. I would recommend it absolutely. Okay, takeaways. What did I not like about the helmet? The single biggest thing for me is going to be this. This is their chin curtain. It is fixed in the helmet. It is not removable. I most often will remove a chin curtain from a helmet entirely. They have this system here. It's a bungee. It's like a shock cord where you're able to adjust that. You can see this is at its most open and relaxed position. From here, you're able to dial it in. What I did with it is I sucked it in all the way because I really wanted it as much out of the way as possible. From there, I took my time and I tucked the shock cord in real nicely so that it was not obtrusive at all. I didn't do as good of a job there. I prefer if that were removable. This is a component. Having this in place certainly is going to end up being a component of how quiet the helmet is. For sure. So you're picking up a little bit, you're giving away a little bit there. The on-off effort, and this is going to be the same for any one of the real premium helmets with the exception of the Arai Corsair X and the HJC R411 Pro. The on-off effort, you, you definitely notice it. There's no doubt about it. A little hard on, a little hard off, but at the end of the day, you need that proper fit for safety so the helmet's not moving around on your head. It should be tight, but once I got it on, the helmet felt great. Other takeaways, this is once again, this is minor, now I'm just really nitpicking. I don't typically ride with the deflector in place here. I like to remove that. This one, they, they really have it held in nicely, and that shows when you go to remove it, I mean, it takes a lot of effort. You know, like, at first you're almost thinking, man, am I gonna break this thing? That's, you could call that really good quality and excellent engineering at, at the same time, right, as I'm looking at it as a takeaway. So overall, I was really happy with the helmet. All right, let's dig a little deeper into the features and benefits, the overall construction of the helmet. Let's talk about what makes Shark special as I go through all this. We're going to start off with the shield. Remember, variable thickness, 4.5 mils in the center, it gets at its thinnest point on the outside, three mils. Class one optics, that is done so it's distortion free. You need that variable thickness to really be truly distortion free. The shield ratchet system, you've got multiple detents, if that's important to you. On off and shield retention. This is pretty unique, a lot of engineering here. You're gonna flip this lever like so, come to the other side, Flip this one, kind of wiggle it around until we get this to pop out like that. And on the other side, once you've done that, pull it right off. So you have these, and that is metal in there, okay? This is aluminum. 
on both sides, spring-loaded. Those are holding the shield onto the helmet, as well as these aluminum, and this is actually aluminum, so they're adding weight to the helmet with a thicker shield and this ratchet system. They're adding weight to the helmet because they believe it increases the level of safety, which obviously you're wearing a helmet for safety reasons. So I like the shield system. To put it back on, very simple. I'm gonna slip that back in, do that on both sides. You then want to push in and rotate. Push in, you might have to work the shield up and down just a little bit and rotate, it'll kind of lock itself into position. As always, double check it before you go out and ride in it. Go up and down a couple of times to make sure that you have it secured. Excellent system, lots of engineering there, and that is part of what makes Shark special. There is tremendous innovation and engineering in each and every one of their helmets. You'll see that throughout the range. The manufacturing is something else that's fairly unique. They own all their own factories. They're not farming this out to a factory that's owned by someone else that's making 250 brands of helmets. At the end of the day, there's like four major factories in China that make the overwhelming majority of helmets regardless of brand, okay? With Shark, and there's some other brands out there like this too, Arai is the same way, Arai, you know, they own their own factories in Japan. Everything they do is Shark only. There's not other manufacturers making the helmets for them, so they have tighter quality control. Let's pull out the interior, give you a look at this, and then we'll show you one of the most interesting features Shark has to offer. The minute you get any of the interior parts in your hand, you feel the fabric. You can tell it is high-end. The stuff feels great against your skin. I think they did a wonderful job there. On par with any of the major helmet brands. Speaker pockets, if that's important to you. If you want to tune the fit of the helmet, they use two shell sizes and you're able to get different size cheek pads and such to tailor the fit of the helmet. Top pad removal. Two snaps in the back and then you need to release this from the channel up here. And that comes out, you can see here. Once again, top quality, stuff looks great. Neck roll removal. Go ahead and release this from its locking tabs. Kind of work around. You can see one piece neck roll. Chin strap covers. Double D-ring retention system. It does use a magnetic chin strap retainer. That is kind of a nice feature. The excess is just held in place there with a the magnet. Use that on the track. That worked great. It stayed in place. You're able to remove these and wash them. Even the fabric on here, it's high-end stuff. Once I get all this out, we'll show you the most unique feature to the Shark Helmet. Okay, now that I have the interior completely removed and out of the way, you can clearly see the most unique feature to the Shark helmet. Look at the channels in the EPS. This is very unique to Shark. I want you to think of every one of those channels, that's like a shock absorber, okay? They've engineered the EPS to not only manage the energy from the impact, but to also tighten up the duration right, of that energy transfer that can also be damaging for sure. This is where Shark really starts to separate themselves from some of the other brands out there, especially the less expensive stuff. Tremendous engineering and effort put into the safety of the helmet from the EPS to the shell. Remember, they work together as a unit. The part that's really gonna save your bacon, it's the EPS on the inside because that's what gives itself up to save your bacon. Other features, you can see there's speaker pockets that are molded into the EPS of the helmet. They line up with the cutout in the cheek pad. 
This is also Shark Tooth Ready. It's their own proprietary Bluetooth communicator that slides into and integrates directly into the helmet in this little pocket right here in the back of the EPS. It's an easy install. That's something that we'll talk about more later. You know, are a lot of folks, you're not going to use that on the racetrack, but if you're using this helmet on the street, those features are available for you. Makes it a nice, clean install. End of the day. I've ridden in all the premium helmets. I own all of them at this point. How do I feel about this and would I recommend it? The answer is yes, I would recommend it. I enjoyed riding in the helmet. I'm going to continue riding in this helmet and blend it into my current crop of lids where it shines, I believe, above all else. Aerodynamic performance and it is so unbelievably quiet, it is almost spooky. Okay, it was that quiet. So if that's really important to you, there is no other premium helmet on the market that operates at a lower noise level than this. Overall build quality is great. I love the heritage of the company. Based in France, the headquarters, they have some real engineers there. And you see that when you get these products and you pour through them, you can see the effort that's been put into producing one of the best products in the helmet industry. Another important fact is they own the factories that produce these helmets. Instead of sharing factory time with 249 other helmet brands and having your quality control in the hands of someone else, they're able to manage that all internally. I think that is a victory all in itself. There you have it. This is the Shark Racer Pro helmet. I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com.